Hello, hello, this is Sebastian, and I have Dirk in front of me on the video screen. This is 2debate.net, the debating podcast, in case you did not know yet, and we have another episode today. Which one is it? Which uh, one is it? Today's motion is a new financial crash is coming. Run! Run, run. We are going to deliver financial advice today. <laughs> just like you know, we, we love to give health advice on homeopathy. Now today is finances. So the motion is basically run for your life. Cash is king. Uh, the flip of the coin has decided that I will be against the motion. So I will claim that there's no financial crash coming and that you don't have to run. You can just walk slowly and feel confident with the state of the economy. Uh, the flip of the coin has also decided I will start the debate. If I'm not incorrect. Yes, I think you're correct. Could I, could okay. I, could I uh, uh, throw you off rails by saying, oh, haven't you been for the motion and uh, second? No, because I double checked twice. No. I, I always double check. <laughs> I double check I... twice, so it's yeah. Thank you. I almost check. said that. You don't have. Oh, <laughs> God, well, whatever. <laughs> I always make sure that I'm not going to make the, the the wrong decision on which side to defend and when to start or not. Well, starting or not is not a big deal. It doesn't change that much. And of course, I think uh, you're versatile enough to flip sides just on a moment's notice. You prepare both sides anyway, right? Well, I told you before the recording what. Uh, truly which side I'm on for that motion um, so it's going to be interesting today let's just say okay let's do this Sebastian goes first and argues against the motion relax I love data I love data so yes you'll have some minor corrections but a crash major crash unlikely and the reason for that and reasons well one of them is data Fair enough, price earning ratios are quite high um, across Western markets. But if you look at price to free cash flow ratios, they're actually perfectly in line with historical averages. Also, you can bet that central banks, federal reserves will step in. They're watching. They're watching for us. They're watching out for us. And we'll make sure that things don't go as wrong as they have done before, because they have gone very wrong 10 years ago and in the year 2000 and before that. So yes, you could think historical patterns would indicate that things would happen again. But here's a major difference. Think about this. The economy is growing, but unlike the past, it's growing very, very slow. But it's growing slowly, like 1%, 2% in the, in the Western economies on average per year, but it's stable. And that's the difference with before. In, in the past, you had like these massive swings. You had like massive inflation, massive growth, then sudden crashes, like which were deflated everything, which divided GDP by half for some economies, and then everything started again. And now, for the past 10 years, you have something fairly slow. So, you know, stock market is one thing, but it's not the only aspect of the financial uh, market. It's just one component of it. And this time, companies have earnings, like they're actually generating profit. It's not like the dot com bubble where it was just like, you know, imaginary and future earnings, which did not materialize. So things are happening. And, and there is enough data, data points to feel comfortable that it, you're not going to be faced with a major crash. And if anything, what's coming is not a crash. It's war with North Korea. And war tends to boost production. So you can bet that the economy will flourish because you can produce weapons and all that kind of fantastic stuff that you want to use. I'll use. I'll have more arguments. But overall... Relax. Data's with you. No financial crash is coming. Now, it's Dirk's turn. Let's hear his argument. Excuse me, I'm smiling. I'm actually, I'm actually laughing. I'm suppressing a laugh. Because uh, what you were saying about, hey, institutions and governments are watching over us. They protect us. They care for us. Yes, Right, like the other times when the bubble bursts. So, is there a financial crisis coming? Of course there is another financial crisis coming. Markets develop in cycles. They go up and they go down. And um, actually, in, in the large global scale, it's, it's even 
kind of uh, neutral because you always have winners and losers. The problem is when there is a large cluster of losers on one side and a very small number of winners on the other side that you cannot really predict. And that's what we often call a bubble that bursts and then starts a financial crisis. So markets develop in cycles, though there is the next financial crisis coming. And there have been three already. And some of the signs we see today are fairly similar to what we had in the past. For instance, uh, way out price stock prices to some of the companies uh, or increasing, increasing investment numbers. Or the fact that today stock prices are higher than any other time in history. And there were only three occasions in the past where this has been the case. And guess what? All these three occasions actually were right in front of a financial crisis and the bubble burst. So I don't even know why this is an argument. Of course, there's a financial crisis coming. Not sure where to run to, though. So maybe running is not the right option. But maybe putting all your money into the typical suspects to invest in is not a smart move either. And no, they're not watching over us, I'm sorry to say. Now it's Sebastian's turn. Let's hear his rebuttal. Let me go back on two aspects you mentioned. Uh, I love them. You mentioned there's winners and losers. Well, that has always been the case, and it will always be the case. I read an, uh, an interesting uh, analysis recently, unrelated to this debate, but I, I'm going to use it because I, I found it interesting. Of course, the stock market is a gambling uh, a, a casino. In fact, what they, they looked at is that half of the stocks, that I think the 26,000 stocks that existed in the U.S. market since the early 20th century, more than half of them were earning less than treasury bonds. So basically less than, than inflation or just doing nothing uh, without money. So yes, it's a losing game. There's actually most of the value was created by, I think, 4% of the stocks, like the biggest, like Exxon and, and Apple and that kind of uh, well-known stocks. So it is a losing game anyway, regardless whether the economy is growing or not. Overall, it is a losing game for most people. So that doesn't change anything. The thing is, when there's a crash, it, there's, you have more losers and the losses are even bigger. Uh, so that's what happens. And that's the second point that I want to go to. The stock price, it's true that it's at a record high and it's scary and it scares me because you know I want to invest and I want to know what, what to do. But you have to look at data. And this is why the stock price in itself is not enough because you have to adjust this for inflation. This is why you look at earnings, which means is it does it correspond to actual money being generated and produced uh, by the companies? And it's the case. So this is why you look at price earning ratios. This is why you look at price to free cash flow ratios, and you look at historical trends, and you can see that it's okay. It is okay. It's not, you know, at the lowest levels. Granted, you're you're right, but it's not to the point that it leads to disaster. And it's a bit like the real estate market in a in a way, because I've been waiting for the real estate market to crash. As you said, it's a very long cycle, and what may happen with the real estate market is that it doesn't crash. It just stabilizes and waits for inflation to catch up. So this is what actually we may be in a new era of inflation catching up with those various financial markets, real estate, stock market, and what have you. And therefore, you will not have a major cr crash. And if you keep waiting, then you're not going to invest when it's the right time. You also mentioned something which I was about to mention. We're always wrong with predictions. So very likely, I am wrong, or very likely, you are wrong. So you can basically invert whatever we're saying, and the other, one, the other person is correct. But there's one, one major point that I want to I finish off with. And that's something I touched upon in my introduction, is, and that the economy is also quite different from what it was before. And the pace at which people equip themselves with key instruments is also changing. Look at smartphones. Almost everyone around the planet has a phone, if not a smartphone, and the equipment rate is exp exponential. And that means people can do way more things than they could have done before in a way that was not imagined before. So that leads me to think that there are very, there's a very stable basis for the economy to grow from today with devices like smartphones, which may seem silly, but in, in places like some African countries, when the farmer has access to uh, the, the price of the, of the crop that he's growing and can sell at a better price on the market and not be ripped off by middlemen, that changes everything. When you have access to health information, when you do not have it before, mortality decreases. So there's a fundamental shift in the economy today. And overall, I've never been as joyful as today. So if I have been, come on, surely there's no crash coming. And now on to Dirk. Let's hear it. So let's, let's say a few things about bubbles and why they burst. 
uh, or financial crisis is how they are called, uh, if not a burst bubble. There are a couple of things that always happen. First off, there's more money floating around than the companies involved and the companies being invested in actually are worth. Now, you said there are realistic prices and realistic values. Really? Really? Facebook that spent 19 billion for WhatsApp? Are you seriously telling me WhatsApp is worth $19 billion? Time Warner Cable that sold Comcast for $44 billion? Really? There are plenty of deals like this. And actually, this is a, a, a sign that happens in front of most uh, bubbles. And there have been several, not all, all developed to a full global crisis, but there have been bubble bursts in the past. And every time they happen before that, you have jaw-dropping deals like this. And this is one, one example. What is another criteria? Um, a criterion? People feel safe. People feel in control. People feel um, everything is okay. And you see that in in rising uh, management salaries, in people taking luxury jet trips to places around the world to close deals, to have luxury cars and all that. This is what you see. And this is typically what is, after a bubble burst, uh, criticized the most, that managers have been greedy and they see what they did with their bonus uh, salaries and all that. Yeah, we have that right now as well. Luxury car sales soar. We have more uh, private jets flying around the globe than ever before. There is more money in the system than ever before. And on the other hand, you balance that by saying, oh, yeah, we have smartphones and technology and so many people investing. This is actually what scares me the most. The, the way well more than 90% of the trade these days actually happens automatically out there within milliseconds systems trade based on signals. And this is what makes it spin out of control really fast and probably faster these days than used to be the case in the past. So it's not comforting, uh, comforting me that uh, that you say there's so much technology involved in so many people. Actually, it's it's more people that don't know enough about the markets. It's more greedy people than ever before. There is more money being paid for things that cannot be worth that much um, uh, money. And in the end, there are automatic systems that can spin out of control very fast. And on top of that, we we do what we always do in front of these bubbles. We start deregulating. You have somebody like Trump in office. Here you have him. We actually planned on not mentioning Trump. Now I'm doing it. Who tries to get rid of some of the protection regulation that was put in place last time we had a bubble burst. I'm not as convinced as you. And I think our audience will follow me voting for the motion. Yes, we should run. Final statements. Sebastian goes first. Watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. This is in Luke in the Bible. Yes, I don't think we have more greedy people today Dirk, than before. Uh, luxury jets, ooh, so bad. I can, I can, if you, if you feel uncomfortable with technology, I'm happy to give you a private lesson. I mean, I'm not going to teach you how to use Facebook. I mean, I'm not advocating for that if you have anything against Facebook. Uh, but yes, there's more money around, but it's normal. There's more people, there's you know, progress, scientific, technological progress. And so what? You got automatic trading. Yes. And now, in fact, now you can do trades within a nanosecond. This is the, the split um, that is, uh, I think, recognized as, as legal. So you can do a billion transactions per, per minute. Uh, no, per second. Uh, I'm, I'm losing track of what I'm saying. Uh, nanosecond. So it's uh, a billion per second. Uh, so yes, you're about to have some flash crashes, but not a major crash. This is what we're debating today. You're going to have mistakes, like you know the the fat fingers, the fat thumb pressing by mistake on the laptop, or the machine uh, reacting too quickly. But overall, the economy is growing. It's slowly growing, but it's uh, on a, on a sane base. Uh, a lot of indicators are are reliable and look uh, positive, and I'm positive, um, and it's not very often. So if I'm positive, there must be something. Um, so and there's room for growth. Dirk. You know what? If a Nobel laureate tells you there have been only three times in history where stock prices have been as overpriced as today, and these three times have been right before the Great Depression, right before the burst of the internet bubble, and right before the housing bubble burst. And if 
you see the kind of deals happening right now, the kind of overpriced companies, the kind of greediness and deregulation happening. And yes, on top of that, automatic systems. Well, I would say it's not too bad to have a very affordable yet easy to maintain life in some nice warm area of this planet uh, living off coconuts or something definitely nothing that requires money because uh, it's not going to be too far in the future that we have another burst coming and so please go to the page and vote for my motion yes it's inevitable there is another financial crisis coming and i think it's rather sooner than later Let's see. And let's see what our listeners think. Please vote <laughs> on the no, 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 no. You're not, you're not influencing them. This time they can decide for themselves that they vote for me. I am not influencing. If you think, if you think, it's not about if you think a crash is coming. If you think our arguments convinced you. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's the main subtle difference. I need to insist, because otherwise I'm going to lose easily. <laughs> um, if uh, uh, Dunk's arguments convinced you, then you vote yes, you vote thumbs up. If my arguments convinced you that no crash is coming, you vote thumbs down. And you go to todebate.net to vote. You can go to iTunes. You can continue debating with us on Facebook or email, whatever you choose. Oh yeah, and, and I would really love to. I would really love to hear from our listeners where you would suggest to run to if there is a financial crisis. Oh, where should we run to? Yeah, I mean, like on my deserted island. It, uh, it's not. It's not a good idea to be in the Caribbean these days. Um, <laughs> it's uh, maybe maybe That's some Mediterranean island. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I don't have any red line when it comes to to humor. <laughs> I'm not sure about our listeners. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe I should. I need to water this one down. <laughs> no, it's fine. Come on, <laughs> this is humor. <laughs> yeah, but there's a number of places where it's not great to be living at the moment, right? like North Korea or like I, I guess southern Myanmar. If you're a, if you're a Rohingya, I don't know how you pronounce it in English. I guess I mean, it's not I mean, great uh, to be in Syria you, at the moment. North Korea is a pretty stable region when it comes to financial crises. <laughs> <laughs> what, whatever whatever happens it's actually hey, I'm, they don't I'm care working, I'm working hard on a deal with the North Korean regime to get a podcast translated in North Korean <laughs> and being streamed every morning at 9 o'clock in the morning come on don't derail it uh, yeah so you, you you consider calling yourself Kim Jong Sebastian Kim Sung Seb King Sung Seb King Sung Seb, Seb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure hmm. clean up yeah okay clean. don't forget to vote go to iTunes Send us your comments and tune in for the next episode next week. All Cheers. right. Thank you. Take Bye. care. <laughs>
So anyway, I mean, it, it could be a combination of factors, right? One thing could lead to another because things are overpriced. But this this is a, an area which I don't see as, as much talked about. And I love data, so I actually look into the details of things. Yeah. Um, just like the subprime aspect, you know, was not talked about until things, you know, happened, until things crashed, and then you, you, and then we could not see how low it could get, which is another thing which is difficult to predict. Like when, once you're in the crisis, you 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 freak out. You think like it's the end of the world. Like you're not going to have your bank account anymore, and then and then you and then it's, by the time things pick up, you know, it's, it's like you haven't realized you had you had gone past the low point. Anyway, yeah. So, so that yeah, that's that's the other thing. The what I what I read was that. Um, That, um, to your point, um, credit cards are one of the bubbles waiting to happen. Um, mm -hmm. Private spending, private loans, all these things. Um, also, um, when you're in a crisis, you don't know if you survive. But if you survive, you could actually very well be on the side of the winners. So, so a good example of that is uh, um, star if, you, if you bought stocks for Coca-Cola right the day before the Great Depression. Um, If you if you bought stocks then and you kept it, you would be a very wealthy man today. <laughs> But it's that that was the worst possible price at the time you could have right. bought this sta right. a stock. And the, the 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 truth, of course, is uh, when you're you know you know you're in a crisis when it's too late, and when you already did the wrong thing. And and this is this is an after the fact uh, situation so you 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 see the prices are falling you start selling things and because they keep falling and falling and falling this is why it hurts you so much um, and be, because you may not be able to just keep the the stuff around long enough to to pick up value again that's the other other problem you have um, but there there are always winners it's a, as i mentioned earlier you just have a hard time predicting who the winner is going to be I'm not telling what side I'm actually on. So, okay. we, so we can say that afterwards anyway. Yeah. Keep this for the snippets. This is, oh, well, we, we, are, we are a big mystery to our listeners anyway. No one can tell what side we are on. Maybe, maybe you're a secret homeopathist. I, I have to use that word more often. I trained that word in our third episode. And ever since, uh, I have not enough opportunities to say it. <laughs> maybe we should, we should have another debate like, yeah, on, on the topic. Like, Yeah, and uh, like uh, homeopathist and inevitable are the two words that I learned in this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> would, would Trump inevitably be a psychopath? Would he had homeopathy prescribed for him? Oh my That's god! An yeah, oh he's god. yeah. <laughs> he must know. And a show show. Host. Well, we are again uh, back to Trump. Uh, today is not about Trump. I hope. I think. I believe. No, I don't have Trump in my in my stuff. That's good. Not That's good. Yeah, yeah so, surprisingly, we we did we managed to avoid Trump in a number of debates lately. It's yeah. Not surprisingly, it's, it's good. It's yeah. Healthy. Yeah. yeah. Sane. Yeah. <laughs> And, okay, so I have just one minute, right? Yeah. God, I can't even. You you gave all the arguments in your three minutes. You you must have got you cheated. <laughs> What? <laughs> the even is the counter argument, not the argument. Oh my god, what am I going to do now? Uh, I think I'm going. I think I'm going to quit the Bible. <laughs> why? 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 Why did I cheat? I actually, I, I fight for my motion. Damn it! You fight, but you. But the, the second part is the counter argument, the rebuttal, right? As, and I know how to pronounce that word. It's okay. No, I'm, I'm joking. Half joking. I'm not. I'm not joking. Quarter joking. Okay. Yes, quarter. Okay, uh, let me finish up then. Um, twice double joking. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> I'm double checking my, my joke twice. Yes, that's what I do. Yeah.